and welcome to this deep dive update of SAS Visual Analytics for SAS Wire 2023.06, where we'll take a look at the much improved new UI and the lightning speed it provides you when building and viewing reports. Let's dive in. Here we start off on the home page that comes now with SAS Visual Analytics, which has been brought in line with all other products. On the right hand side, you can click on what's new within the software and also get guided to interesting articles on the SAS community. On the center, you have all the content and can navigate through it like you can within SAS Drive directly and of course switch between the tile view and the list table view. And you can easily create a new report by clicking the new report button. Here, we are now inside of Visual Analytics and you can see that the interface has changed, but is still the same. Let's first concentrate on the left hand side of the screen, where you can see we now have this little extension button that kind of gives us more than just the icon. It's especially helpful if you're new within Visual Analytics to navigate the content easier. And then once you are familiar, you can minimize it to get more screen real estate and just use the icons. Then we will stay on the data pane. And here you can already see there's some things have moved around. Very cool is the ability to just use a table you have previously used to quickly get back into it and build a new report from it. Or of course, you can also import data from your local system, for example, or add data that's already available within your system, which we are going to do now. This pops up this little search interface where you can then, similar to how you can do it in SAS Information Catalog, just search through all the available data. Let's search for the car's data set. We find it in here. We can take a preliminary look at how this table looks like and we're going to add it. Now you can again see we still have the categories, measures, aggregated measures like you are used to. But when I start to hover over these element, you find these checkboxes, which make selecting and knowing what you have selected much easier, much faster. And so we can just take these three, drag them in the middle to activate auto chart and get a nice little table to understand our data. Well, this is just for this initial viewing, already a nice update. But when we go to join data, we have another update that helps us to more easily build joins within visual analytics to enhance our capability. And it's much more of a guided approach that doesn't have to be that deep and you can simply generate easy to build joins from here, select additional data and then join your data. We are going to skip that and rather look into building a new custom category, which also sees a lot of updates. So you can see we are still within, we can still see our report in the background. We can give our new custom category a name if we want to, we can easily select on which it should be based on. So let's take the type, for example, and then we can start to building groups and we could say, okay, let's create two groups. The first group we are going to name simple and then let's add our different cars into here. I have no idea what a simple car is, so I'm just going to take the first three and then we're going to say complex add the other two in here and then we will take a look at what should happen with the remaining values we're going to group them as or show as is or show as missing so we're going to just say these are missing values okay and let's quickly take a look so now we have added this category and you can see where the missing comes into play here And then we have basically gone over the new updates within the data pane. The objects pane sees the same awesome capability to just select all of the different chart types that you are interested in and simply drag and drop them, for example, onto a new page. And you can easily select and see what you have selected from this pane now. Speaking of new pages, 
when we go to add a new page, you see that it no longer pops up the template view, but rather it prompts you to select the template and opens up this nice little menu that gives you a better visual indication of how your data is going to look like, which is super helpful in my opinion. Next up, we are going to go to the outline tab which also sees a lot of improvement when it comes to moving content around. So you can see how quickly the content switches and you can more easily build and navigate complex report constructs to deep dive them and rearrange complex systems here. Let's go from the left hand side to the right hand side, where we first of all have the same structure for the pane menu, where you have this indicator to open up the whole definition. And then once you have familiarized yourself, save that screen real estate and just use the icons. And you can also see here that the whole thing has gotten a facelift and, but it's still the same interface that you are known and like to use already. So we can go in here, we can say, okay, let's apply an additional background. And you can see as I'm clicking, everything happens instantaneously. It's much quicker, it's much faster. And that helps us to more easily navigate and especially when building reports to build them interactively. Another improvement that has been added is the ability to increase the custom sorting that you have. So let's go to an item that has more than 25 values. We go to custom sort and in the past you were limited to 25. Now you can just take whatever you like in here and custom sort your data to your heart's content to make it as unique to your situation as you need it to be. You still get the prompt, but now you can say OK, and it overrides that. So that's super helpful and building out reports as you see them fit. We are going to head back to the home page, which we're going to use those three vertical points, navigate to the home bar. And you can see here on the right hand side, an additional box has to open up which indicates the opened reports that we are currently using. So you can also easily jump back from the home page and let's navigate into one of the prepared examples that I have built, which will showcase two additional features that have been added to existing um, objects. The first one is the forecasting. Um, we can hear if we go into the what if analysis, into a scenario analysis, we can now go in and let's say we adjust the value and run a what if scenario here, we hit apply. We can now get natural language generation of what's going on behind the scenes and help us guide the user through these what if scenarios if they are not that analytically advanced or have not used these types of information in the past. Also for people that use the GeoMap features, especially to generate pins and communicate values, they will enjoy the new update to the pin management. Let's drop a new pin onto our map. So we're just going to click. We are going to set this location. We can easily give this pin a name. Let's call this IA and let's head back. So now you can see all of the different pins that are already created. Let's drop a second one somewhere in Germany, set the location, let's say DE. And now you can also selectively easily just hide and showcase your different pins. And of course you can also do this through the little box down below to just hide the current iteration that you are have selected. So that makes life a lot easier if you're deep into the pin management and helps you improve stuff. Also for images, if you use the image content object, you can now see the actual image name in the options menu of that object, which helps you to better understand and navigate what you are actually using within your report. And then Finally, we also see an improvement to the job content object, which we are going to pull in 
just from the objects pane. Then we are going to select a job definition that we have created. And here we can then see, okay, for this example, I need SAS compute because I'm accessing SAS help in the background. So it's spinning up a compute pod for me in the background to show me all the columns that are available for SAS help cars in my case. And then I can interact and submit my code from here. So let's go ahead and select the, the origin column. And now let's run this example, which is just a simple ODS graphics that gets generated and put back into our report. And from the menu, you can also go ahead and view the job log in this nice little drop down. You can see the full code that's running behind the scenes to quickly understand what is going on. Super helpful. And while we are here, we are also going to take a look at the new rich text editing feature by activating a custom title. We are going to click on the untitled and you get a nice pop-up to help you generate a nice text. This is of course also available for the text object. And let's write some hello world. This is BA in 2023.06. And let's for example say we want to make the VA a bit bigger. To highlight it and let's put the release into bold and let's click OK. So that makes editing your text in a rich fashion much easier, much quicker and helps you to navigate these things much easier in my opinion. That's the update for SAS Visual Analytics. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive in all the new UI features and how much quicker this software now has gotten to help you build better reports faster. Bye-bye.